Okay, welcome back. In uh, this next video, we're going to be looking at finishing the registry page. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to keep it into this one video. So, we'll get right into it. As I said in the last video, um, <coughs> as we finished off, we run this uh, complete reg complete underscore reg function. And this returns pass or fail as to whether the capture um, is successful or not. So if the um, registration is successful, we want to go in, uh, go on to registering our player into the database or the player user's account into the database. So, first thing we'll do is we'll handle um, what will happen if it returns a fail. Okay, so what I've done here is um, if the message equals fail, I output a text just saying uh, catch process failed, try again. And I reload the capture page. I've also removed the the uh, capture settings uh, from the top and I've now put them into the capture.php page at the top here so first we start with the, the original um, cap uh, capture which generates the classes <coughs> uh, followed by the capture color and then we go through the process of picking a random um, color to we that we need to select Followed by shuffling them, um, setting them into very uh, static variables, and outputting the um, the divs. So if we come over to here, and we go to register. As you can see, uh, it says please click the red box. If I click the red box, currently nothing happens because there is no um, pass statement. But if we click, say, the yellow box, they shuffle up and this also changes it didn't on that time obviously coincidence so we click the blue box this time and there we go see you can you've noticed it changes it's ch now changed from red to blue and now to yellow so as you can see the boxes the, the it asks you to click a different box nine times out of ten um, due to the lack of um, very uh, the lack of colors that I'm using it's only obviously only got four to choose from so the chances of it repeating the same color is high <coughs> so now that's what happens on if we fail the um, the capture and now we'll go on to running a pro uh, running the process of actually registering a user's account if they pass. Okay, so <coughs> if we get a pass from the uh, capture check, we store all this information into variables we have the email the confirmation email the password and the confirmation password which we need to pass over to the register.php page we've also got a new variable here called token and what this token does is it's a randomly generated uh, string which we will compare um, upon major form submissions to ensure that the submitted form is not falsified if that's a word it's not it, we, you know it's not a bot just um, submitting data directly to the to the script uh, we've got a <coughs> hidden input here 
which carries a session that we've called J, uh, JS underscore token and it's got a class of JS underscore token which is where we grab that token from to store in that variable. Now that token is generated up the top here I've got a function called create random key and it's got a list of all the um, alphanumeric characters in there which creates a a, ra a random kit a random set of uh, numbers and letters according to the amount that I want to um, generate Right, as I was saying, um, so yeah, we store the session, uh, that random key that we generate into the session of JS underscore token, which we then dump into that hidden variable. So that's one of the things we've got to check uh, when it comes to uh, storing all the information into a user database. Okay, so now we're passing through our data to the register.php page. When we're passing it through with a mode of complete reg, complete dash reg. So if we come over to the register.php page, in our switch statement, I've added a new case of complete dash reg. The first check we do is an if statement which checks that um, our session of JS underscore token is set. If it is set and the session uh, JS underscore token equals post, um, our token va uh, value from the post variable, then we can go ahead and start processing the registration form. If it, if that comes back as a fail. We get a, we echo a message saying page error. Please reload the page and try again. If if it does pass, then we store the variables of email, email con, uh, password, and password con into these variables here, and we just run a couple of checks on them that we ran through um, via Java uh, by jQuery. First, we we validate, we check the validate email, and we're making sure it's returned in pass. If so, that it's all good. We also check to make sure it uh, validate password. The password equals pass. Now, those are the two checks that we done um, here. While we check when we're checking the email and the password through um, jQuery. We're also checking to make sure that email equals the email con and password equals the password con. If all those um, equal true, then we get a sign up. We echo a message just saying sign up successful. Um, this will be replaced by storing the data into the database. If not, if it's false, then we echo out form completion error. Okay, so upon passing the um, checks for the valid valid emails, passwords, and the matching emails and passwords, I've created three um, additional variables here. I've got a salt, which uses that create random key function that I mentioned earlier. I have twenty five, and I use twenty five characters. I also then produce a hashed up password using a pass hash ver uh, function that I've just created and also I've also created a verify a variable which will contain a seven digit number and I'll explain more on what a verif the verify does later. So the hash password, if we come up here right here. It takes two parameters. The first is the password and the second one is the salt. 
and it basically returns an MD5 encryption of the password concatenated with the salt and that's, the, that's also con concatenated onto an SHA-1 um, encoding with a base64 encoding of the password. This just makes a nice complicated string of letters, numbers and whatever other characters are in there. <coughs> so, once we've done all that we then need to insert the data into the, the database. Okay, so here's the query we insert into the user account. We set the account email to equal the email, the account password to equal the hash pass uh, variable, the salt to equal the salt, and the verify to equal the verify variable. If we come back over to our database here, you can see I've added a salt and verify um, fields onto the data onto the table. After um, executing the query, which I haven't actually included it on this script yet, um, we set email headers. Um, this will contain. This will allow the email to contain um, HTML markup. So we've got the MIME version of 1.0. We've got a content type of text slash HTML with a character set of ISO 8859-1. Uh, and then we have the, the from uh, email address, which I'm just putting my email address. We then set the mail subject of registration complete and the mail body to just say thank you for registering registering to station invasion your verification number is and then it issues that seven digit verification number that we generated okay so I'm going to give you a quick explanation what this verify digit is a lot of the time when you sign up to a website you receive an email with a um, an activation link now this is going to be in replacement of the activation link when you first log in to um, the game, I'm going to make you make it require a verification pin, which is this seven-digit number. If you, if you, the user has received the email, then they would have received the verification number. We will look more into accepting the verification number um, and identifying whether we need it or not when we come to run doing the login in script. Okay, so the last part um, of the registration is to send this email. Okay, so we've now sent we've got here that we're sending the email as uh, the mail function, we've got it in the if statement. So in mail you've got um the first variable uh, the first um, requirement is the two variable the email we're sending it to then we've got the subject followed by the body and then the optional parameter of the mail the, the headers 